Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. Um, enjoying a day off, making another video here for you guys. And uh, this one's been, once again, one of them, like most of the last ones, been very, very, very long awaited in the process. And this will cover basically the evolution of Italian combat helmets. Um, what we see here is Italy's first combat helmet, and basically Italy being of limited manufacturing capability, you're going to see a lot of outside influence, not really at too many home designs, uh, and they've really only had four helmet designs total, and one of them was only specialized. So they haven't had a lot of helmets uh, throughout their whole history. Um, but we're going to go over some of the differences and other ones you can find. And these are only the basic models. I don't have every exact model. Um, but I've got stuff close enough to represent uh, the basis of everything. Because some of these stuff, especially some of these older ones like this uh, Italian M15 Adrian here, you see, are much harder to find. And this one, the liner has unfortunately completely rotted out of. Um, but... You can spot one fairly easily, and they used a couple different versions of Adrian. So this is this is their first model of Adrian, and this one was actually made in France. And I can tell you how I know it was made in France, um, because if we flip it over, you could still see the horizon blue in it. Now, a lot of countries used the M15 Adrian in World War One. That would be, um, you know, the Serbians, uh, the Greeks, the the Italians, the Russians, the French, the Belgians, a lot of countries adopted the Adrian, and all the ones that were made in France. So a lot of these countries took very early uh, Adrians that were made in France before they could make their own. And so this one happens to be one that was retrofitted to an Italian model from a, a French model. So as you can see here, this one started out as French because all the exported helmets from France to other countries started out as Horizon Blue. Um, you could also tell this one kind of came later in the war because it's the darker blue color rather than the lighter blue color. Um, very early Adrian helmets would have been kind of in a lighter blue. Uh, later you see this kind of iron blue as it was called uh, color um, or dark horizon. Um, you could also see where it had the original um, tabs here to put on the French liner. They were broke off uh, by the Italians because the Italians wanted a different attachment method and you could see it via these eight rivets that are around here and they were held in by tiny split pins. So uh, tiny split pins, eight tiny split pins all the way around the circumference of the helmet held in the liner rather than four brackets of um, little straight bits of uh, sheet steel here and you would bend these prongs so they were pointing straight out and you would pierce the liner and then you would fold the prongs over and that would hold it in. That's how the uh, Russians and the Belgians and the French all had their helmets held in place and the Italians wanted something a little bit different. Um, and later when Italy started to make their own M15 Adrians, they didn't have this style liner and they were one piece. So the Italians were the first country, I believe it was like early 1917, uh, to start making their Adrian helmets where the shells were in kind of like the M26 style of helmet. Um, so rather than these four pieces, because the early Adrians, like this one, are made in four pieces. There's there's the dome, the front visor, the rear visor, and um, the comb up here. Uh, the Italians started making theirs in two pieces. So it was just the comb, and then the bill and the dome, uh, the bills and the dome were one piece. Um, during World War One, you can you can find those as well. But this is their earliest model that was started out as French, and they're all in this green color. Uh, Italy had kind of a very light olive green as their camouflage in World War One. I. I shouldn't say camouflage, but uniform in World War One, and their helmet uh, reflects that. It's this kind of crudely painted on light olive green color, and this is normally what you find them in for configuration. And they used these up until the 30s uh, when they came out with their own design, uh, which would be the Italian M33. Now, I don't have an actual M33 because they're ludicrously expensive, and I can't seem to find one in my size that isn't beat up. But this is a Bulgarian M51, and it's basically the same exact thing as an M53, except uh, sorry, it's an M33, but except for some aesthetic differences. Um, so the difference between this helmet and an original Italian M33 is it would have been in that light olive green color again. Um, the rivets would have been domed rather than flat. So, And it would have had a canvas chin strap rather than a leather chin strap. So a lot of people are passing these off as Italian helmets, and they're not. Um, but 
basically the same thing. The liner was slightly different aesthetically, but for the most part it was the same thing. It was kind of an aluminum frame that had this leather um, tongue kind of German style system on it. A uh, big wide canvas chin strap is what they had. It was much wider than the leather chin strap you see on this. and uh, But it had a raw edge. And then they experimented uh, later uh, after the 1933 came out because they were kind of too expensive to make. And so they tested the M34 helmet, which you can still buy because Greek adopt Greece adopted the M34. Um, they were never entered service, though. Um, but you can see some of those Italian test helmets every now and then pop up on secondhand websites and collector sites and stuff. Um, and it was basically a simplified uh, M33 style shell. And this helmet was used for a very long time with reserve units and everything right up into like the 90s, basically. And it worked. It was a very good design. As you can see, it was adopted by Bulgaria. Um, and... It was a very round design, so it deflected shell, uh, defe deflected shrapnel and everything very well. They were made out of pretty good steel, despite being kind of thinner and a lighter helmet. Um, they're very closer fitting to the head, so they're not as bulky or as big as like the German stall helms and stuff. But that's normally how you can find uh, an Italian helmet. Uh, this kind of is this kind of shape. So the M33s are the most common, and Italy made them for a very long time through World War II, um, and into the the 50s so uh but then after that they were all just kind of refurbished and retrofitted and they might have done some smaller runs and everything by then but most of them you're going to find are, are kind of that 20 year window the 30s to the 50s um so and you can find them with a bunch of different stencils on the front for different units and everything like that so and now we're going to go into an italian kind of specialized helmet um that would be the airborne helmet and this is not the uh original configuration of this helmet. This is an uh, M42-60. Now the original M42 would have been a little different. Uh, the rivets would have been different on it. Um, it would have had a kind of the same chin strap as this. The liner would have been uh, slightly different. So, but the chin strap would have been leather rather than uh, this cotton material. But this is like the canvas that would have been on an M33. Uh, was the same kind of uh, material, except it didn't have this chin cup on it like this. Um, it would have been just kind of a single strap in this kind of herring bro bone canvas that you would find on an original M33. But this M42 was given um, only to dispatch riders and um, limitedly to dispatch riders and to paratroopers. So it's a Italian paratrooper helmet and they were all retrofitted in 1960 to this design where you see the canvas chin strap rather than the leather chin strap and the liner was kind of changed a little bit and these rivets were changed a little bit but for the most part the, the shell didn't change and it's just kind of a, a bowl it's based off of the Czech M32 helmet shell actually so but this fits a little bit closer to the head and in my opinion has the com most comfortable liner of any helmet fielded during World War II. It's a lot of very thick soft comfortable pads here and uh, this brow pad keeps the helmet from coming down and banging on your nose or anything in a landing if you're jumping out of a plane you can get jostled and thrown around very much so this this protects the helmet shell from cutting into you because once again it is a raw edge a lot of the Italian helmets have this raw edge on them which uh, if you ding it or something slightly, it can mangle this raw edge and that can actually become very, very sharp, which is what I tell people to watch out for because um, if it hasn't been well taken care of or anything, you can accidentally slide your finger across here or something and it'll cut you if this raw edge is dinged up enough. It becomes like a saw blade. So be very careful with that. But a very, very comfortable helmet liner, very, very well liked because these were fielded for a very long time, actually up until the 90s again, so from 1942 up until the 90s. Um, when Italy adopted their first composite helmet design, um, which I happen to have here, which is the Sept 2 helmet. Um, this helmet went through a couple different revisions. It's still in use. Uh, it has a slightly different chin strap variation other than this, but it's basically a Pazgat. Um, Pazgat with some updated features, some features I don't really like, and there's their own video on this helmet, actually, if you go and do it. The chin strap is different as you can see here it doesn't really have a chin cup um this is meant to ride um kind of in the uh, crook like the crease of your neck above um like right where your kind of chin turns into like your your throat 
So it's that kind of crease there is where this is supposed to sit. Or you can adjust it to where it sits right on the end of your chin, but it tends to slide off. Or you see a lot of guys ride with it like up over their chin, but under their bottom lip. Um, I've seen various different pictures. It's made out of a very heavy, heavy duty nylon. It's got a nice leather pad on it uh, that is removable if you want to. It's held in place with Velcro. Um, but it's not the most stable design. It has kind of a later American style Pazgat liner. It has this crown pad up here that is leather to keep uh, the adjustment ring, as you can see here, by this strand from cutting into your head, much like the American Pazgat did later. And it also has like the parachutist liner, as you can see, this kind of black foam behind here, and it sticks up in the back of the helmet here um, to help provide with that impact protection. This helmet um, performs kind of bad ballistically. It f performs worse than American Pazgat. It's thinner. Um, the Kevlar is much, uh, as you can see in here, much coarser than an American Pazgat. It's not finished as nice. You can see the individual layers. They, they don't overlap evenly. Um, the, the, the finish is kind of rough on the inside of the helmet, as you can see here. It's not, not as nice as like an American Pazgat or many other helmets that came before this, such as like the Schuberth. Um, but Italy makes these all in Italy. They make pretty much everything. They are historically known for not uh, producing something beyond their means of manufacture. They don't want to rely on a foreign source for their military. So a lot of their stuff is made in Italy. Um, another gripe about this helmet is a very smooth finish. So when this helmet gets wet, now genuinely they have covers on them, but when this helmet gets wet, it becomes very, very shiny because of how smooth the finish is. Um, this helmet is also, despite being kind of a thinner, coarser weave of Kevlar, very heavy, um, even compared to like an American Pazgat. They're about the same weight, even though this helmet is much thinner than an American Pazgat. So it's it's just all around not not the best design, but it works, you know, so I can't really, you can't really fault it if it works. Um, if you do get the chance to get one of these, I highly recommend you, you go and try it out, like try it on and see how it would compare if you've wore a, an American Pazgat or like a shoe berth or something else. This helmet is, doesn't feel bad, but it doesn't feel good either. I'm very conf conflicted about it and you can see it uh, in, in its own video where I go into more depth about this helmet. Um, but that's kind of the evolution of Italian helmets, a general overview. Once again, I don't have every single model ever made, but so in about a hundred years, they went from, from this to this. So that's pretty standard for most countries, actually. Um, other than like the United States and Russia, most countries have only had a handful of helmets, not, not very many. And in the Italians case here, four or five, giving most of the models, um, as far as general shape and use goes. I'm sure there's lots of different companies and little variations as with most helmets, but once again, it's not really enough. Like they use two versions of Adrian's. It's still an Adrian. It's not really worth changing the model. Like they had a couple different variations of M33s, but it's still an M33. So, um, but genuinely this is, this is what they've gone from in about a hundred years. And this video has been long overdue and I've had these helmets for quite a while. I really wish I had an original M33 in decent condition, and I've seen them around, but they're just asking way more than I'm willing to pay for them, so unfortunately. And I'd like to find one in my size, which is about size 58. So if you guys know one, or you know a link to a good one for a reasonable price, leave that in the comments, and I'll, I'll see what I can do about getting an actual one, and then I'll remake this video. Um, but thank you so much for watching, you guys. Uh, I enjoy your support so much. If you... Uh, you can support the channel just by watching my videos and clicking on the ads because that's how YouTube gives you the bunny now is by clicks on the ads. Um, you don't need to sign up for anything by far, but if you click on the ads, it goes a long ways to support me. And if you really, really, really want to show some support, there's a donations link to my PayPal. It's not through Patreon or any other company. I get 100% of the funds if you go through my PayPal and you just donate some money. Um, there's going to be some some videos coming up here in the works. So if you do donate uh, over a certain amount, which is not a lot, um, like five bucks, let's say, if you donate at least five dollars, put your email in the PayPal uh, donations thing, and I'll send you a link to some exclusive content that's going to be coming out here soon um, to all you guys. There's only a couple of you in there so far, and I'll tell you what, you're gonna you're really gonna want to be in this because it's going to be a longer, very in-depth kind of cool video. Um, 
as you watched my last live stream, I bought a couple of Ross rifles. So we're going to get into some of those. And those are unfortunately going to be exclusive unless we get enough money came in, uh, coming in here to where I can release it to the whole channel. But we got certain goals to meet before that happens. So, but thank you so much for watching, you guys. As always, I appreciate all of you. And please like, comment, subscribe, leave any additional information, user experience with any of these helmets or opinions or anything like that in the comments. Please keep the comments on topic. Don't just wing anything into the comments, please. We're still getting a lot of that. We need to keep comments on topic in case I missed up on some information or if there's something else, uh, you know, or opinions or user experiences that are very good or very bad about this helmet that can be in the comments. I want people to find that information very easily. And if it's just clogged with garbage um, that isn't related to this this video, it's going to be a lot harder and a lot more annoying for people to do that so i appreciate you guys please 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 keeping everything on 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 comment you know on topic to this video in the comments uh very much so um but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys around